Book One, Chapter Five of A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Yurovich Lermontov. Translated by Mar Murray and J. H. Wisdom. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kevin Davidson. I confess that for my part I had trouble enough over the business. So soon as I ever learned that the Circassian girl was with Grigory Alexandrovitch, I put on my epaulets and sword and went to see him. He was lying on the bed in the outer room with one hand under his head and the other holding a pipe which had gone out. The door leading to the inner room was locked and there was no key in the lock. I observed all that in a moment. I coughed and rapped my heels against the threshold, but he pretended not to hear. Ensign, I said sternly as I could, do you not see that I have come to you? Ah, oh, good morning, Maxim Maximitch. Won't you have a pipe? He answered without rising. Excuse me. I am not Maxim Maximitch. I am the staff captain. It's all the same. Won't you have some tea? If you only knew how I am being tortured with anxiety. I know all, I answered, going up to the bed. So much the better, he said. I'm not in a narrative mood. Hanson, you have committed an offence for which I may have to answer as well as you. Oh, that'll do. What's the harm? You know we've got halves in everything. What sort of joke do you think you are playing? Your sword, please. Mitka, my sword. Mitka brought the sword. My duty discharged, I sat on the bed facing Pechorin and said, Listen here, Grigory Alexandrovitch, you must admit that this is a bad business. What is? Why, the you've carried off Biela. Ah, it is that beast Azamat. Come, confess, I said. But supposing I'm fond of her? Well, what can I say to that? I was not a plussed. After a short interval of silence, however, I told him that if Biela's father were to claim her, he would have to give her up. Not at all. But he will get to know she is here. How? Again I was nonplussed. Listen, Maxim Maximitch, said Pechorin, rising to his feet. You're a kind-hearted man, you know. But if we give that savage back his daughter, he will cut her throat or sell her. The deed is done, and the only thing we can do now is not to go out of our way to spoil matters. Leave Biela with me and keep my sword. Show her to me, though, I said. She is behind that door. Only I wanted myself to see her today, and wasn't able to. She sits in the corner, muffled in her veil, and neither speaks nor looks up. Timid as a wild chamois. I have hired the wife of our Dukhan keeper. She knows the Tatar language, and will look after Bella, and accustom her to the idea that she belongs to me. For she shall belong to no one else, he added, banging his fist on the table. I assented to that, too. What could I do? There are some people with whom you absolutely have to agree. Well, I asked Maxim Maximitch, did he really succeed in making her grow accustomed to him, or did she pine away in captivity from homesickness? Good gracious, how could she pine away from homesickness? From the fortress she could see the very same hills as she could from the village, and these savages require nothing more. Besides, Grigory Alexandrovitch used to give her a present of some kind every day. At first she didn't utter a word, but haughtily thrust away the gifts, which then fell the lot of the Dukhan keeper's wife, and aroused her eloquence. Ah, presents! What won't a woman do for a colored rag? But that is by the way. For a long time Grigory Alexandrovitch persevered with her, and meanwhile he studied the Tatar language, and she began to understand ours. Little by little she grew accustomed to looking at him, at first furtively askance, but she still pined and crooned her songs in an undertone, so that even I would feel heavy at heart when I heard her from the next room. One scene I shall never forget. I was walking past, and I looked in at the window. Biela was sitting on the stove couch her head sunk on her breast, and Grigory Alexandrovitch was standing facing her. "'Listen, my Perry,' he was saying. 
Surely you know that you will have to be mine sooner or later. Why, then, do you torture me? Is it that you are in love with some Chechen? If so, I will let you go home at once. She gave a scarcely perceptible start and shook her head. Or is it, he continued, that I am utterly hateful to you? She heaved a sigh. Or that your faith prohibits you from giving me a little of your love? She turned pale and remained silent. Believe me, Allah is one and the same for all races. And if he permits me to love you, why then should he prohibit you from requiting me by returning my love? She gazed fixedly into his face, as though struck by that new idea. Distrust and a desire to be convinced were expressed in her eyes. What eyes they were! They sparkled, just like two glowing coals. Listen, my dear good Bella, continued Pechorin, you see how I love you. I am ready to give up everything to make you cheerful once more. I want you to be happy, and if you're going to be sad again, I shall die. Tell me you will be more cheerful. She fell into thought, her black eyes still fixed on him. Then she smiled graciously and nodded her head in a token of acquiescence. He took her by the hand and tried to induce her to kiss him. She defended herself feebly and only repeated, Please, please, you mustn't, you mustn't. He went on to insist. She began to tremble and weep. I am your captive, she said, your slave. Of course you can compel me. And then again tears. Grigory Alexandrovitch struck his forehead with his fist and sprang into the other room. I went in to see him and found him walking moodily backwards and forwards with folded arms. "'Well, old man,' I said to him. "'She is a devil, not a woman,' he answered. "'But I give you my word of honor that she shall be mine.' I shook my head. "'Will you bet with me?' he said. "'In a week's time?' "'Very well,' I answered. We shook hands on it and separated. The next day he immediately dispatched an express messenger to Kizyar to purchase some things for him. The messenger brought back a quite innumerable quantity of various Persian stuffs. "'What think you, Maxim Maximitch?' he said to me, showing the presents. "'Will our Asiatic beauty hold out against such a battery as this?' "'You don't know the Circassian woman,' I answered. "'They are not at all the same as the Georgian or the Transcaucasian Tatar women. Not at all. They have their own principles. They are brought up differently.' Grigory Alexandrovitch smiled and began to whistle a march to himself. End of Book One, Chapter Five. Recording by Kevin Davidson, www.blogordie.com.